your your mouse scroll and so you can see the whole function so it's not a it's not a huge function I do see right off the bat um, I see knife here so this is something to do with our weapon uh, when I killed myself with a grenade did I have the knife pulled out I'm not really positive why that says knife I've actually never done this before, uh, this function, but we'll give it a shot. So the whole idea is you just got to poke around and tinker and see what's going on. So this is the disassembly, remember, and what we want to use is the hex rays decompiler. So you're going to press F5, and it's going to decompile all this assembly that is somewhat meaningless to us. And it's going to ask us, uh, we assume that the segment is read-only because of its permissions. In case the permissions are, are not normal... Uh, you could get some some errors and some wrong results, but default options are always good in IDEF in most cases. So we can see this is a user purge function, and I have no idea what that is actually. IDA also understands user purge calling convention is the same thing as a user call. The only difference is that the callee cleans the stack. So before this function returns, it's going to clean the stack. We're not sure exactly what this is. You can see it's declared uh, the return value as an integer. It's a user purge calling convention. That's the name of the subroutine. Let's rename this right now so we don't lose it. Sometimes I lose where I was, and that pisses me off. So we're not sure exactly what this does, but it does decrease the health. We are 100% positive on that we can see that um, there are one, two, three arguments, okay? A1 for argument one, A2, A3, and they're all integers. Most of the time, especially if they're addresses, they're all going to be ints. That's IDO's default way of treating them. So what we can see here with EAX, when it says at and then it has a register, Argument 1 is being passed this function in EAX. Argument 2 is being passed in in EBX. So these are not regular arguments that are being uh, pushed onto the stack. So this is different. But argument 3 is definitely pushed onto the stack before it gets called. And just like uh, any other function, we can right-click this and click uh, jump to cross-references. And this function calls decrease health. So let's open that. And I don't want to see it in pseudocode. I wanted to see it in this view. So let's right click here and click jump to cross reference to operand. There we go. So now we can see here's the call right here. All right. And we see one push for EDX, but we don't see any other pushes. So there's some pushes up here, but there's other calls as well. So immediately before this call, there's one push. So one argument is pushed onto the stack and the others are loaded in the registers right here, EDX and EAX, right? So this is loaded. These three things, we know that they're three arguments. So let's go back uh, to pseudocode. We'll double click decrease health. That'll take us back to de decreased health. And let's briefly show you this is the local, um, local variables to this function, okay? So these are all going to be on the stack. and they're only locals. Um, it could pull in a global variable as an argument and then store it in here. So QMEM copy, uh, it's memory copying, and you can hover over this, it's gonna tell you it's a fast call, and then the argument types. So uh, the first thing is destination, then you have source, then you have the size. So we see V12, uh, variable 12 is a char, and it's an address of, so basically it's. it's it's passing in the address of a uh, character. Um, and then we have the address of knife with 298A1. So we have 298 right here. I hate looking at anything in decimal when I'm in IDA. So if you right click it, you can view it in hex, octal, char, enumerator, whatever the hell you want. So click hexadecimal. We now see 12A times arg uh, argument 1. So what is this doing? Why somehow it pulled in the string a knife and named this argument as a knife. And then we see 12a here and we see 12a here. All that u means is that it's being displayed as a as a um, an unsigned 
int, I guess, yeah. So it's taking a knife, and now you see it's it looks like it's ask it's um it's accessing the element of an array by multiplying twelve a by argument one. So we know this is a decrease decrease health function. Uh, we have a weapon array, and it's 12a is probably the size of the weapon structure, okay? So it's copying a weapon structure. Um, the size of the structure is 12a, and we can confirm that because it's, ask, it's accessing elements of the array using that same size. So it's indexing into this array. So let's change this, because this is not the address of knife. Uh, it probably is the address of knife because... Knife is probably the first element in the weapon array, uh, and probably the pistol's, you know, the next one. So I don't like the idea that that's a uh, knife, so I'm going to name this weapon array. And so we know 12A is the size of the weapon structure, and then A1 is the index into that array. So we know now that uh, A1, argument 1, is the weapon index. And so if you had written a function and accessed an array in your code and you would disassemble it, you would have seen this exact same uh, concept and how it works. So we can go right here, right click and edit comment. You can do this in the uh, text view, the graph view and the pseudocode view. It works in all three. And we are going to say uh, copy current, yeah, copy current weapon. So again, this tutorial is going to be long because uh, it just is. So if argument three equals this, so I don't know what the hell that is. Right click it decimal. Does that mean anything to me in decimal? No. Does it mean anything to me as hex? Yeah, it is kind of a weird hex value. So. Sometimes I'll just copy this, and I'll go to uh, Google, and I'll just paste it. And uh, y int 32 maximum value. Okay, so the maximum, that's the maximum value of a 32-bit int. That's what that is. That's max int. So, you know what? I already know what this is, actually. This, this has got to be testing if the amount of damage you did was uh, max int. So, if max int and what is it testing max int against i mean if damage is maxed in do this and so we see that argument two argument two if it's max int it's going to copy argument two offset four into result and then it's going to set argument 2 offset 4 to 0 and argument 2 offset 8 into 0. Remember what I said in Sheet Engine, EBX plus 4. That's your health address. But we know that F8 is the health address. So what is that? What's that plus 4 all about? So this is some structure in your player class. Um, maybe it's an array. Um, some sort of array. I know, so the plus four, so this is health. So this is uh, set health to zero. And how do we know this is our local player argument two? Um, when we see it's a D word pointer and then it's being dereferenced. So it's the value pointed to by this address. So set health to zero. So if health is offset four, then the next four byte variable is armor, right? Cheat engine, health. I don't even have armor in here, do I? Well, let's find out. So Add address manually, it's going to be a pointer. Uh, the first offset is F8, so 8 plus 
uh, 4 is C. So offset 4C um, is down here. And is this armor? Possibly. It's a 0. Let's set it to 55 for fun. And then let's go here. Okay, now we see I have 55 armor. So that's our armor address. So now we look right here. So this is setting our armor to 0. Set armor to 0. Um, so, <clears throat> what the hell? Enter comment, set armor to zero. Thank you. So what's going on here? If max int copy the health, copy health into result, and set armor to zero and health to zero. So this has got to be damage. Argument three has got to be the damage. So uh, if damage is max int, copy health for some reason, and then set health and armor to zero. So this is that. This is for the grenade. If I've hit myself with a grenade, it's going to tell the decrease health function to decrease it by max int. It's an automatic kill. And if so, it's going to set armor to zero and health to zero. Okay, so cool. So we have, we've already figured out these two arguments. And then argument two is still confusing here. Um, I'm going to say this has got to be an array, and it's some sort of array um, about like inventory or stats. Um, so I don't know what to call it exactly. So inventory stat array. We can always change these things later. I recommend putting something in so you have some idea, and if you figure it out later it's different, then change it. Because every time you change something in here, it's going to propagate throughout the, all the code and just make it easier. So if they, if max int do this, if not maxed int, and sometimes I like to just go crazy and uh, comment everything. If not maxed int, uh, remember offset 8 from this array is armor. Uh, it's going to copy the value pointed to by that address into here so we know now that this this local variable variable for v4 is a copy of our uh, armor so these local variables as a compiler optimization they can the function can use the same stupid variable over and over again so i hate to just call that you know armor uh it's not a good idea so i'm going to call it an armor buffer So uh, v5 equals 0. I don't know what that's all about. Damage equals v6. So rather than getting down here and being like, OK, what the hell is v6? We're just going to name this uh, damage buffer. And v11, variable 11 equals a, an armor again, armor buff 2. And then if armor if armor is less than 25, then uh, variable 5 equals 1. If it's greater than 50, it's 2. If it's greater than 75, it's this. And then based on after that calculation has been done, there's a switch statement based on this variable. So if your armor is, the more armor you have, the bigger this number is. And if you had no armor, it's going to be set to zero. Uh, I'm going to say that is um, some sort of like armor absorption uh, rating. Armor absorption rate. Okay. Armor absorption rate. So it's doing some calculations uh, about your armor. And then it's going to do some shit because of that. So based, uh, if armor absorption weight is zero, um, which we know up here. So basically, if you have less than 25 armor, it's going to do this. And it's taking, it's taking that damage buffer and it's assigning a new value based on your armor times this number and uh, you can see each one of these cases is doing basically the same exact thing um, and
And these numbers seem bizarre, right? There's no rhyme or reason to that. Now, that's because as a compiler optimization, um, floating point math, multiplication takes less clock cycles than division. So anytime there's a division in the source code, if it's going to be faster to do a multiplication, it's going to take the inverse of that of that number and it's going to multiply it by it. All right, so that's a comp compiler optimization. We can actually open up um, our calculator. Let's look at this and let's get the inverse of this and see if it's something that makes sense to us. So the way we get the inverse is by uh, divide one by that number. So uh, it's as because it's an inverse, it's never going to be the number you saw in the source code. But uh, imagine it's 1.5625, and you kind of just ignore the rest. And just for fun, let's check the other ones. 1 divided by this is that. And then what's this guy? Negative. So 1 divided by negative 16. So not really sure what those are. But we can see, based on how much armor you had, the armor absorption rate is this, uh, one, 0, 1, 2, or 3. And then it modifies the damage buffer based on that. Now, we can see this negative 1 here. I have no idea what it is. And 25. But interesting, they both assign those numbers to variable 8. So variable 8 is got to be it's part of that absorption rate because um, right here uh, variable seven is going to be the absorption it's another some sort of absorption rate armor absorption rate two and then what is variable eight it's some sort of like a multiplier that increases Oh, it's just a, you can see right here, the damage equals, basically, so this damage is like new damage. So new damage equals uh, this absorption and this absorption because they're uh, added together here. So this is kind of like an absorption multiplier. You can see, shut the hell up, absorption multiplier. All right, so if you have really low armor, the new damage is going to be uh, basically just normal damage. If, it, if you have a little bit of armor, it's going to take that absorption multiplier and set it to negative one. So let's say if damage, if damage buff had the original damage, so if that grenade did 10 damage to me, then damage buff equals 10. If uh, down here, check this one. So 10, the new damage equals 10 minus 1 minus this. And imagine if that was 25 minus this. So basically, this would uh, be subtracting less damage than this. Basically, the whole thing is an armor uh, damage absorption rate. So we can come down here. Sometimes you don't need to get crazy. We've got a good idea about what this function does, okay? It figures out how much damage it's going to decrease your health by based on the amount of armor that you had and the amount of damage that the weapon did. I mean, we've, we don't even need to look at this. But uh, because there is a return value, the result... Uh, result equals, oh, and check right here. So remember, this is uh, armor and this is health. So armor equals armor minus variable 9. And variable 9 is just another local variable taking into account the uh, absorption rate. And then the health is uh, health minus damage minus this. Yeah, so we know what this does. Result is new damage. Or new health. No, it's new damage.
All right, so the return value is the amount of damage that this uh, that you did after all that's done. So 